or a state legislature or the county council votes against us, it's a little hard for us to simply blame them if we take this and believe this, 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 this premise that their decision is a risk-reward calculation. Because if they go against us, what we have to conclude is that we fail in our challenge to document that our our proposed answer or our requested action was a better reward uh, because we also failed to outline the risk that that member uh, would, would suffer or would expose themselves to in, in taking such an action. So again, it's, um, I, I believe that we have assets in place. The uh, biggest asset, obviously, is our ability to reach an audience. Maybe our, big, our, 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 our second biggest challenge is making sure we not only understand that, but that we know how to convey it to elected officials. So right now is the time that every one of you ought to be reaching out to your elected officials to talk about fake programming and fake access and coming onto the show to do things because uh, a member of Congress may not be very interested in the fake issue, but a member of Congress who also has to be a candidate we need to get on your TV, uh, we'll be interested in it. So I, I think those are sort of my principles. You know, we can go through, you know, how do you go about setting up a meeting? Answers are there. Simply make the phone call, get the group together, go in and you do your meeting. Uh, I will tell you that, uh, that Deb and, and a few of the gang that came in uh, for the last uh, ACM Bill Day, I think, uh, found uh, that they had great success because they put together these hit teams, they went around and, and uh, you know, had their message home, and they could do it. I, I want to just sort of suggest uh, that the, the three most important words in all of your communications, uh, whether, again, it be at the federal, state, or local level, the three most important words that should begin every one of your, every, every communication you have, is as a constituent. You want to swap out constituent and put in voter? <laughs> Maybe you need four <laughs> words. What's that? I just laughed. I like voter better. <laughs> that was laughing at the choice of voter over constituent. Exactly. exactly. I, I, right, but I, the, the, the problem is that if you go vote as a voter, you have to add in one, one more word just to make it clear that you're a voter in their district. But as a constituent, uh, uh, that, that really uh, let, let, lets them know, uh, you know, and, and then the other thing is that uh, all members are important, some are more important than others. And why do I say that? Because there are certain members of Congress that serve on the committees of jurisdiction that are going to see an issue first. In Michigan, you, got, you all have a number of them, uh, not only serving on the committees, but serving in leadership. So you've got two members of the Energy and Commerce Committee, one of whom happens to be the chair. Uh, I'm sorry, you've got two Republican members mm -hmm. on the, the Energy and Commerce Committee. Uh, you also have to have a number of Democrats, one of whom happens to be uh, what they call chair emeritus, but the senior Democrat. So, uh, again, all members are, are, are equal, but some are more equal or all members have a vote, just some get to, to cast their vote a, a little earlier in the process. I just want to get to the, 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 the very last one, because a lot of the stuff we already know, we've gone through it all in great detail. One of the things that we forget to do is we simply forget the ask. We go in and we talk and we're pleasant, or we call on the phone, or we send an email, but every one of those messages remind people about what our asks are. Our asks are very simple. Please go sponsor the CAP Act. Please tell the FCC it's well past time to act on ACM's bank petition. I'm talking to a senator, same two asks. We need a chance to get to the Senate. Will you bid it? And will you communicate to the FCC well past time to act? On the, on the ACM's bank petition. 
always make sure to follow up and send and give people what you promised them that they're going to do. And then the last thing I want to leave you with is uh, uh, something over the years that I've learned and people actually have felt more comfortable with this. And that is a lot of folks are afraid to go in and take a meeting because they're afraid that they're going to be asked a question that they don't know the answer to. And that's okay because, in fact, we think that there's a magic answer to any question that you don't need the answer to. And that is, the answer is, I don't know that. I don't know the answer to that, but I will get back to you. And what that does is that that establishes a reason for you to reach back to that elected official again, whether it be at the federal, state, or local level. And the purpose of having your meeting in the first place was to create a relationship, an ongoing dialogue. And so I would hope that in the future you'll take those meetings and you won't, you'll not only not fear the question that you can't answer, but you may actually hope for the question that you can't answer so that you can establish that ongoing relationship. So with that, I think I'm apt to take any Q&A. Uh, again, I want to thank Ralph and, and, and I want to thank the, the regional organization uh, for allowing me to do this by, by WebEx. And, uh, and I apologize for making the promise that I could come, only to realize that I had dropped the ball on the scheduling. And I thank you for letting me off the hook. But why don't I take any questions and answer? Quick, any questions and go from there. Any questions? I assume your mic's available. I'll, I'll repeat the okay. question. I'd like to sure. ask you, because I, I was out of the room briefly, but this uh, Representative Markley, Markey, does he still figure in as a good guy? Uh, question from the floor is, does Representative Markey still appear to be a favorable uh, rep to work with? For Massachusetts. The Massachusetts uh, rep. Right. Mr. Markey is the, uh, is the senior Democrat for the Telecom Subcommittee. Uh, he represents uh, the Malden area of Massachusetts, which is a little bit of Boston and just outside of Boston. Uh, Mr. Markey is a co-sponsor of the CAP Act and, uh, and uh, would, do, do we wish that he, that he would demonstrate even more leadership on the issue? Absolutely. Uh, but he has been more of a friend on the issue than he has been anything else. Uh, the biggest problem is, quite honestly, uh, if you're in the minority, you don't get to set the agenda uh, in, in the House. Uh, we need people like Representative Walden of uh, Washington uh, to schedule a hearing for us. We need people like your own uh, Congressman, uh, so why am I throwing a flag with the chairman? Uh, chairman. Dingle. Yeah. Help me out, Deb. Rogers. Rogers. They're, they're saying Rogers. No, no, not Mike Rogers. Um, oh God. Dingle. 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 Half Carter. I'm sorry. Who, Jay? Half Hashes Congressman. Oh, Upton. Yeah, yeah, Upton. Upton. Yeah. Upton. Yeah. Upton. Chairman Upton. 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 <laughs> right, so, so, I mean, the chairman of the committee, the chairman of the committee is, is from Michigan. And if the chairman of the committee decides that he wants to hold a hearing and he wants to move forward on this, it could happen overnight. So, I mean, that's the, the, the chairman in the House, the chairman of the House can't set the agenda. So, while, again, you know, you're right, it would be nice to have more support from Mr. Markey and more leadership from Mr. Markey. Uh, our, our real battle is, is getting the chairs uh, Walden and, and, and Upton uh, to put this uh, on the calendar. Another question? Will there ever be any movement to some kind of national telecommunications policy? Obviously, AT&T and places like that are trying to change things state by state. Do you feel that there's Will there be any effort in Washington to make a national policy? Okay, Jerry, the question is, uh, 
Will there, do you see in the future any attempt to make a national policy uh, as opposed to state by state? I do. I do. I, I don't. I don't think it starts off as a national policy deal with pay, uh, and I don't think that it starts off as a national policy to deal with cable franchising. I do believe that at some point they're going to have to rewrite the act because uh, when the commission handed down its cable modem order and its ESL order, and it basically said the types of communications that we're all dealing with today and will increasingly deal with in the future are not telecommunication services, they're not cable services, they are information services. And the problem is, is that if you're going to continue to have a system of universal service, that is, the insurance of a, a, a universally available, affordable dial tone, even though the dial tone may be a broadband dial tone, and if you're going to have the continued obligation of providers of services to make their services compliant with uh, something called CLEO, which is the Communications Act in assistance of the law enforcement, uh, they're going to have to redefine or uh, clarify that each of these services has got obligations. And in doing that, they will implicate, I think, the capable franchise, the telephone franchise, uh, and the definition of each of those services. So yes, I think that there will be an effort uh, to address these issues. Interestingly enough, I think that it will really be driven by the people that own the wires because people that are using the wires uh, will find ways not to provide services. I'm sorry, not to pay for services. Um, and, and, uh, and, and it will be driven by law enforcement. But because of that, I think that we'll have the opportunity to uh, examine and redefine, reestablish uh, what obligations, what, what community obligations ought to be with respect to set aside of capacity and, and funding of, uh, of community, community voice. And then a follow up to that, Ralph. That's One more comment. Are we getting closer to what DIRT used to envision that eventually we'll all have a meter outside our house and we'll just be paying for bits and bytes? Uh, the question was, uh, in the future, are we going to realize the, the uh, vision of several people, uh, DIRT Conan in particular, that ultimately we'll all uh, have, a meter, outside have a meter outside our houses uh, counting bits and bytes and uh, charging us accordingly? Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a, that is such a really, really good question. Uh, and, and the reason I think it's a really good question is I find myself on the outs with a lot of my colleagues, both in local government and in the public interest community. I think there's a lot of folks that are, that, that, that hold up the metering uh, as, as the fear of the future. And I can understand that point of view, but I have a slightly different point of view, and that is, um, if I don't know that we're ever going to know what we're paying for a service until that service has been treated like every other commodity, and if I know that I'm paying, I'm making up numbers, right? If I know that I'm paying a penny a bit to Comcast. Uh, for the first 500 bits, uh, and, and then you know, two pennies, you know, for every bit thereafter. I can start to compare that with what Verizon might be offering me, or what you know, uh, what what the satellite dish might be offering me. So yeah, I, I think the idea that there is going to be metering. Uh, there's going to be measurement of, of, of bandwidth. Yeah, I think that that's a real possibility. Um, but I'm not sure that it's, I'm not sure that there are some benefits to it if it's done correctly. Um, and, and I'm also not 
not sure that if in measuring that, we also don't, it won't give us evidence to show what I believe is the collusive nature of, of current broadband providers who all seem to want to charge us just about the same amount. Um, and, and, and they're charging us that without any representation as to the cost of providing uh, that family. So, yeah, I, 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 again, I, I think it's, it's probably what the future does hold, uh, but I'm not sure that it's all bad. As I said, but I'm, I'm different on that. I mean, I think Joe Van Eaton and, and, and a few of the other folks that, that you might talk to uh, would, would, would disagree uh, with me and probably do it much more articulately. That's why I like to do phone calls by myself because nobody can argue with me. <laughs> okay, one, another question.